Okay, here we go. Um, so this is today's plan. Um, the today's plan is first we'll finish off uh, um, proving the theorem for our CG, which is um, there are two key points. The first one is the search direction. Um, will be a subspace, actually search directions. But even though uh, we have many directions to search, uh, because we have this Q orthogonality, like I said, uh, you guys don't have to take notes. So I have a more detailed version of notes right here, um, which I'll upload to uh, Canvas. So, because we have Q orthogonality of the space, um, every time we only need to uh, minimize in one direction, it's fine because every other direction is automatically taken care of if we have Q orthogonality. So uh, one search direction per iteration. So that's why it's a state of art, even though the search directions gets bigger and bigger every iteration, but every time we only need to minimize in one direction and we are good. So uh, that's why it's called state of art. And later, so we'll finish uh, proving um, the, um, the theorem and later we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate how do we in implement it looks quite complicated, but we'll get some annotation. So we'll implement this algorithm to uh, for our um, programming assignment of uh, uh, homework five. So this is today's plan. And now let's begin. All right. So let me uh, let me uh, copy down the uh, the lemma last time. Uh, we got a proof. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, so, because I didn't look at the notes of mine during the Wednesday lecture, so the sign may be different. So the residual may be minus residual uh, in my notes, um, but uh, overall it should be the same. And again, let's remind us our problem. Again, this is our problem. And this is uh, our function f of x. Okay. And we have, uh, this is our uh, minimizer. So I hope everyone is now familiar with this uh, kind of routine-ish way of writing the quadratic uh, minimization problem. And uh, uh, then what we do is uh, we have a subspace. So um, we have a subspace. So every time we add a one search direction into this subspace, um, okay. Right now, this subspace is dimension k plus one. And uh, um, so we have to require this, all right? So we have to require, um, so for example, this uh, uh, dimension s of k is k plus one, and we have to require it's less than we're gonna m. So otherwise, if we have an n dimension n space and we have let's say m plus one vector, then these m plus one vector are sure linear dependent, but we want linear independency right here. So it's actually one of the homework you, you are asked to prove uh, Q orthogonal vectors are linearly independent. Um, all right, so, and then what we do is we minimize. So we minimize, we do a, it's like a multi-direction search. So uh, original we have one line search, but uh, right now we do a multi, uh, 
direction line search so that uh, um, our k plus ones iterate subtract our initial guess is the same as project to this subspace. So we let s as this subspace and project s uh, the q projection. And this is our x star subtract x zero. So this is our this is our k plus uh, first iteration, and we know that we also know that I think uh, I use I'm not sure I think I use r so uh, so right here I I want to say <laughs> I'm not sure if the sign of my r here is the same with the lecture we had on Wednesday but it should just be a minus. Uh, plus thing and you guys can check and let me move this right here so it is uh q of x k plus one subtract b and it's also um q times uh, our k plus ones iterate subtract our optimal one okay so, and we also know that because this is a projection, because this is a projection, the pr because this is a projection, so we have anything. So always keep this in mind. So any vector subtract its projection is Q orthogonal. So this is Q projection, then uh, this is Q orthogonal. So. Uh, and last time we derived from this, we'll have an important orthogonality that is x star subtract x k plus ones iterate uh, is q orthogonal to this s. Okay. So once we have these setting, uh, we have the following two important this. Uh, um, orthogonality um, then first one is we actually we have already proved this that is um, the k plus one gradient so this is a gradient is orthogonal uh, to all the previous search directions so it's p i for i equals 0, 1 to k. Okay. Okay, the second one is more subtle. We have already proved the, the first one. The second one is a is a key property for the CG is the at k plus one's iteration, the gradient is orthogonal to the search direction, but q orthogonal. So it's so it's like a, it's a regular orthogonal to to all the like a previous uh, search direction, and it's Q orthogonal to up to like the previous one. Th this is the key uh, to CG is it's Q orthogonal to almost all search direction except one. So that's why we only need to. This is the reason mathematical reason why we only need to update like uh, find the uh, minimum along one direction in each iteration, even though our search space is a subspace. So let me, let me recap. The CG's magic is the search direction in the subspace. You have many directions, but because of the Q orthogonality of these directions, each time we only need to search the minimum along one direction. So, I mean, if, if so this is a summary. Uh, if you're asked, like, what is a uh, good thing about CG, you can answer this question. I I gave this answer like 85 out of 100 because it doesn't have much technical details, but uh, I would say it's a, it's a B plus answer to like to this question. Okay, so now let's see the proof. And uh, um. So what happens is, 
I think the first one is already um, is already obvious. Is because so let me recap the first one. The first one is obvious. It's because x star subtract x k plus one is q orthogonal to s. Right here. So th this this is a uh, like the definition of the k plus one c iterate. And uh, um, so what does this mean? Is it because it's q orthogonal? So it's q. This guy is regular orthogonal to s. Okay. And what does this mean? And and this is a gradient. Um, this thing right here is a gradient. Actually, it's negative. So this actually implies uh, minus rk plus one. Oh, sorry, is orthogonal to uh, to s, and which means the gradient is orthogonal to, uh, because S is a subspace, so it's orthogonal to every single basis in this subspace. So it's I, I from zero, one, up from two, K. Okay. So this is, a, this is the first part. The second part is, uh, is more tricky. Um, it's Q orthogonal. So not just, for example, we, we can think about this. It's regular orthogonal to a bunch of vectors. And then it's Q orthogonal to almost every vector except the last one. Okay. So it's pretty, it's pretty magical if we can like, it, it's like doing a double grand Schmidt, but uh, we, we leave some little caveat for the last one. Okay. So first we have to note it, notice that because it's Grand Schmidt, so let, let's say, uh, whoops. So the second one first is by a Grand Schmidt. Oops. Grand Schmidt says the following, even though we orthogonalize, orthogonalize all these vectors, but the soft space is spanned by these vectors are the same. Um, so right here, we first we have to acknowledge that even though our S has the, these K plus one vectors, all right? It's a span of uh, K plus one search directions, but it's also the span because we essentially, we did a Grand Schmidt, a Q, Q orthogonal Grand Schmidt on all these vectors, R0, R1, up until RK, okay. So now for, then now for I is zero, one, till K minus one. Okay, we can write something like this. So it's XI plus one equals x0 plus j equals 0 to i alpha j uh, p j. OK. Why this is the case is like, uh, so at, uh, for example, Um, let's say I forgot. So at, uh, um, which one did I use? I think I use K, right? Uh, at K equals zero. So S equals S zero. We only have one vector. So our X one equals X zero plus alpha zero times the first vector. Okay. And then at, uh, um, k equals one, s equals s one. Now we have two vectors in this uh, search direction subspace. So, um, so x two equals x zero plus alpha zero p zero plus alpha one p one. But we gotta notice one thing. Um, 
this is x1 okay so it's almost like we have um we have an iterative formula um right here so we can what we can do is we can rewrite this as so because of this it's like we can continue uh this type of a uh, induction for all uh case whoops so plus alpha i pi and again we acknowledge the this one okay it's like it's like x1 here and plus something this one is x i plus alpha i pi and uh, um now we simply we simply do a subtraction okay so now keep this in mind keep, <laughs> keep this in mind um now we what we want to do is uh um is we insert x star in the left so it's quite tricky i mean um so we subtract x star and then we plus x star so uh, as we can see that this is still the left okay so we subtract one x star and we add it back right here um and this is our alpha i pi okay and now we multiply both side by q so we're almost there And let me just remind you guys, uh, I is still from zero, one, dot, 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 till K minus one, okay? So <laughs> if we always keep this in mind, whenever we see Q times, whenever we see Q times X subtract something, we have to acknowledge this is gradient so if this is a gradient which is uh um right here so if we ch we just change this k to i and then we have this uh this is i plus one so um but let me still let me still write down this this is uh a gradient of uh x i plus one subtract gradient of uh, uh, x i okay and also because we have defined this uh, residual vector so it's r i plus one subtract r i and uh, um and the right is uh, alpha i q p i okay So if we look at left, it's a linear combination. It's a linear combination. So linear combination of our eyes. Okay. And now let's look at the subspace formulation. The search direction vector are P, but meanwhile, it's the Schmidt of us. So, which means if this i plus one is less than or equal to k, which means i is less than or equal to k minus one. So, this if this i plus one does not exceed this k, this vector, the left vector here, okay, the left vector here is in our s, which is s. And this implies what? This implies alpha i q p i um, is in is in what is in our s. Yeah. 
now we're almost there and but only for i t up until k minus one okay and now it's already there um right so um we know that um so we know um it's q orthogonal um because it's s and we know that x k subtract um so uh let me let me just directly use the first one okay so for example uh we know that right here the first one so it's in this and we use this fact subtract x star is uh, q orthogonal to s okay and uh, uh, this means so this actually implies so let's write this all over again um, it's orthogonal to s okay and this implies r k plus one is orthogonal to s but now this vector is in s okay so this implies this implies r k plus one is orthogonal to this vector and by the way alpha i is just a number so it's essentially this vector it's orthogonal to q p i but for i only from zero, one till k minus one. And now here comes the magic is, we just change this orthogonality to q orthogonal because we have a matrix q in front. So this implies it's q orthogonal to pi, but only, only to k minus one. So i equals zero till k minus one. And we have done the proof of the key theorem of CG, okay? And now let's recap what we want to do here. What we want to do here. Um, so what we want to do is, so after, after K, uh, after we get the K plus one's iterate, so we add one more vector here we add one more vector here, but uh, uh, but this vector is ortho it's not Q orthogonal to all of them. As we can see, it's Q orthogonal to, so we have RK plus one equals the gradient of K plus one at this point. And we add one more vector in our search direction space. And it's Q orthogonal to all previous K minus one, which means we only have to perform the Grand Schmidt of this vector only to this vector. So, um, so here is Grand Schmidt. And we want to get our new search direction. Which we want to get our new PK plus one search direction that is Q orthogonal. So what we do is we just do, um, we just do PK plus one equals RK plus one uh, plus beta PK plus sum of i equals zero to k minus one, gamma i pi. In last lecture, we have derived what's beta, okay? Um, but uh, um, we haven't derived what's these gamma i's. So the answer, the answer to the question is by the theorem. So by theorem above, 
Gamma eyes are all zero. Okay. And that actually this wraps up um, the CG algorithm 3.2 in the textbook and why CG is presented in that way. Okay. So uh, I guess I, I went a little too quick um, today. So if you have confusion, I have to apologize. If you have confusion, please refer to the more detailed notes that, I mean, today in lecture, my notes is like scribbling. Okay. So, uh, so a more detailed notes will be on Canvas. Um, like, uh, uh, with, a with a much clearer, I would say, uh, the thread of thought. So now let's look at, uh, um, the homework. So in the homework, we have this problem. Okay. So write a conjugate grade uh, function, which inputs a function. <laughs> Keep this in mind till today. Okay. We're all doing this uh, toy problem. We haven't, we haven't done any real problem yet. Okay. This, this, this is a quadratic function, which is a toy problem. And for the real function, and how do we do it? And uh, uh, I mean, it's so the answer, the answer is, uh, um, I would say it's quite straightforward. The answer is just uh, so uh, for the real function. So for real function, not for real function, let's for, for a function f of x, y, or, or even like f of uh, uh, with n dimension n, this input, and how do we do CG? The answer is quite straightforward. We do Taylor expansion. Okay, so for that, we approximate um, F at, let's say uh, a point with this quadratic function with Maybe we have another C constant right here. Okay. So at a point, we approximate a function by a quadratic function. This is essentially Taylor expansion. Okay. So uh, now let's uh, let's look at the actual algorithm. I mean, it's it's quite long. It's actually quite long. Um, I put a too long didn't read version here. Okay. I put a too long didn't read. A actually, it's uh, it's not too long didn't read. Uh, this uh, this algorithm is uh, is already long. Okay. So, but uh, let let's uh, let's annotate. Try to rationalize uh, some of it. Um. So now what we have is um, we have so given a function and we have to know its gradient. And we now we have to know it's Hessian, okay? So this is like a, this is like a, like Q in our map, uh, in our algorithm, okay? So uh, this Hessian, and I want to say that Hessian can be approximated, so can be a uh, numerical Hessian. So if we have gradient, we can compute a numerical Hessian. Uh, like, so for example, so for example, partial x, x of, uh, of f can be approximated by, so if we know it's gradient, if we know it's gradient, we can uh, use gradient, this gx, and we do x, h, y, subtract gx, x, y, divided by h, that's it. And we, we do that. And by the way, uh, G of X, G of Y is just the gradient of F. Okay. So we can, we can do the same approximation for other components. And, uh, um, okay. Right now, let me explain. We have actually two iteration here. We have an outer iteration and then inner iteration. The inner iteration is essentially a conjugate gradient iteration. Okay, so, so inner iteration is right here. 
So this is essentially a CG. And the outer iteration is all these, okay? So the CG, the inner iteration is essentially obtaining one good search direction. So CG is, is gives us a good search direction, okay? So the inner iteration uh, of CG is uh, gives us a good search direction based on the current uh, iterations Hessian. Okay. So I mean the 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 procedure is. Uh, Intuitively, it's quite straightforward. If we have a function, we apply theta and we apply CG to its quadratic part. Okay. So, and now, now let's read the algorithm. The algorithm actually has a caveat. The first one is, for example, right here, we have to check. So, by the way, BK is just our Q. This is like our Q. Like our Q here. Okay. So, um, and by the way, you don't have to take notes here either. So I'll send you guys a more cleaner annotated version of, uh, of this. Um, so BK is like Q. And uh, uh, when we go in our inner iteration, we have to make sure Q is positive. That's why here, if we check uh, Q is negative along our search direction, so then we just uh, jump out of the inner iteration. So this this is like a, this is jumping out of the inner iteration. Okay. So and uh, um, it's like a, if it's a negative, then this. I mean, this, uh, uh, for example, this negative gradient is our best bet, okay? Um, for the search direction. But if it's not, we continue. This Z is like a original P. So Z is like, a, so Z is like the original P vector in our CG algorithm. So Z is like, Z is like our P vector right here. So Z is like our P vector here. And now, um, right now, then if after which we have check, uh, the Hessian is not a negative along our search direction, we move on. We just perform our normal CG, okay? So, and here we add, so the textbook add a stopping criteria, it means uh, if the gradient is too small, like uh, we just return this search direction because uh, the gradient is a small means along that direction, um, our function like uh, is closer and closer to our um, like uh, local minimum point. Okay. So then after CG, Oh, actually, I, I I think there is a typo. Not typo, but I forgot. So, um, oh no, um, I don't have to. So if the tolerance is not a met, so if the tolerance is not a met, we have to let PK get this Z um, M plus one, okay? So I forgot the textbook forgot to put this down, but uh, we actually we have need to uh, do this, okay. And then um, the outer iteration is like a, just we do a regular gradient descent. So this is a search direction. So PK is our search direction, and uh, um, alpha K is some step size that's uh, sufficiently small. So this is a, this is a how a CG is applied to a general function. And now let's implement this algorithm. Okay, 
So for the uh, for the Rosenbrock uh, function, so we had earlier. Let me uh, share my screen. Um. So. Okay, if you can't see my screen, please type in the chat. Otherwise, I assume everyone can see my screen. And let me uh, let me magnify my text a little bit bigger. Okay. So here in this example. Uh, we want to illustrate using Rosenbrock function. So in the in the um, so in in the homework, it's a bio function, and you you have to figure out uh, what is uh, what is the gradient and the Hessian for the um, for the bio function. And if you so if you don't like to uh, I mean compute the bio function by hand. Uh, it's okay that uh, uh, you compute numerical as well. So uh, I have already implemented. Um, let me let me run this. So if we can finish this in real time, I have already an implemented a version of Newton CG, which I'll update to GitHub later. Um, so right now, uh, let's, and these, the utility functions are plot the gradient descent. So for example, let's first plot the Rosenbrock function. And, uh, um, okay, and this is a Rosenbrock function. Uh, the the contour of the level set, uh, like I said, this function is not convex, which means um, so we did in the homework uh, four. I forgot homework four or three. If a function is not convex, it means it's Hessian is negative somewhere. Okay, and we we cannot trust that if it's negative, we cannot trust the information Hessian gives us. We can only trust the gradient. Okay, so for example, right here, we have a very narrow alley. I think we've already plotted. So here is, uh, um, the next one is, um, is we have, um, is we have gradient and Hessian. So we implement uh, gradient and Hessian here. Gradient is just a two by one, this vector. Um, we just copy down what the gradient is. Um, and Hessian is a matrix, is a two by two matrix, and already implemented. So now, what we want to do is we want to implement uh, this procedure. Let me magnify this a little bit. Okay. So we have already F, we have an F, okay. Um, and we have gradient of F implemented Hessian of F. Now we need to specify uh, X zero, but before we specify X zero, let's specify uh, this N um, first. So N is N is what? N is the number of uh, outer iteration. Let's specify it to be a thousand just to be safe. So this is uh, maximum number iteration of outer iterations. And the inner iteration. So inner iteration is a uh, is a CG is a uh, um, is the number of CG iteration. So the inner iteration doesn't have to be very big. I think maybe say a hundred suffices. So inner iteration uh, is the CG iteration. So because we have learned, um, for example, this. Uh, uh, we have normally for 2D problem, the CG convergence in two step. Okay. I mean, even the 100 is too much. It's like we can specify 10, but here, uh, let's just set it to be 100 just to be safe. Okay. 
and uh, um, and then we can set our x. So we keep track of the x. So we do uh, we initialize x as uh, numpy zeros. So the number of rows is the number of iterations. Um, because we have it, we we set the first one to be our initial guess. So it's m plus one and two. Okay. And we set the first one as our initial guess, which is x0. So the x0, let's set it to be uh, minus 2, maybe uh, minus 2, uh, maybe 1. OK. So next is we have set the tolerance. Let's set to be 1 minus 1, uh, 10 to the negative 8th power. OK. So right now, we have finished our setup. So I think we have one last setup here. Which is uh, which is alpha k, but uh, uh, because we have an alpha j here, which might be confusing, but uh, um, let me just put uh, my alpha uh, the stash here, just to be a small number. Okay, this is uh, this is alpha k in the outer iteration. And uh, um, and once we have done that, we can we can implement the algorithm. So in your homework, you actually have to wrap this up to a function. So for example, here we just do k in range n. This is our outer iteration, and we just do whatever this tells us to do. For example, we just do z equals numpy zeros, and uh, this is a vector zero, so uh, we have a dimension two. Um, and we have r zero, which is r equals uh, grad f, but evaluate at the current iterate. So here, it's x k. Right here, we have to literally do x k right here. Okay. So for example, in the first iteration, k equals zero, um, and then we have d equals minus r. Okay and b equals the Hessian, Hessian of f at the current iterate. And then we start our inner iteration for j in range um, m, OK. So here is tricky, um, because this pk is like the output of the inner iteration. So whenever, so if. This happens, so we have d, so we have uh, this b at d. So this is d transpose bd, OK? So if this is uh, oops, transpose bd, if it's less than or equal to 0, um, if j is 0, we have to, we have to do p equals uh, negative gradient negative gradient is just a negative r um, but we just to be safe we still do uh, this okay and else we do p equals uh, z okay so here's the trick if we want to do return is we break the inner loop so here we have to do a break so this is jumping out from the inner loop. And this is the key uh, to implement the algorithm is whenever the search direction, whenever the Hessian is negative, we cannot trust the Hessian. We have to jump out of the inner loop and just use gradient. Okay. And then we do alpha. So here alpha equals, um, so this line, it's going to be uh, R. And R divided by um, D at this. Okay. So the next line is Z gets. Um, so this is a Z plus equal means Z equals Z plus alpha times D. And then we update R. So here, we want to update R, but later on, because we, we have to use R sub J, we have to give 
this one. We have to do something like that. We ha we have to store the R in a cache. So here R, we then we update R. Alpha times B at D. Okay. And now we just say if the norm is less than two, then we do that. So if numpy linag norm of of r is less than the toe um we just let p equals the z so z is good enough this means and then we break so return is break the outer loop inner loop my bad and then we update uh right here then we update d so then d equals um minus r plus this is a new r divided by the old r okay and then multiply with the old d so we've done the um the inner loop uh the inner loop now let's do the outer loop and then we just do uh the out last step of the outer loop that is x k plus one equals x k plus alpha um this alpha so this is uh, outer loops alpha times our search direction p okay i think we have to add p here it's because uh um so we have to do so for example this p equals z if uh i mean if it doesn't stop so we have to do this and then we just end the four and then that's it this is a uh, this is uh this is what they call newton cg so let's write um my computer is a bit slow but uh um it should be okay um okay so um it's done running and let's ch let's check um our x so let's check the first uh let's say uh 10. okay so it's it's not too bad and let's uh, plot so i think i have a function of plot gradient decent uh-huh so we have a func right x file is just uh the first of x the first column of x y val is the second column of x and uh, the rest i think the rest are just uh, um okay let, let's make this box smaller let's do minus three three and i think that's good enough let's try to see if it's okay all right so okay the scale was linear so uh, let me down scale equals log so well initially here after 20 step we got here and after 20 step we got here and after 20 step we got here okay so uh the default plot is plot every 20 steps as we can see it's quite good if we apply gradient descent, we can't reach the... So let's try to see what's the last one. The last one is should be, very, as we can see, it's pretty close to 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one is our local minimizer to this function. I believe in our old demonstration, our gradient descent can never reach this alley. Our gradient descent essentially stopped somewhere before. So, I mean, the CG, that's why we, we say CG is the state of our. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, I'll update. So I will update uh, um, my notes online. And uh, also, uh, we'll have a more annotated uh, code uh, online on GitHub as well. So that's it for today.